Okay, so ready for this. We're diving into the world of precision agriculture, mm -hmm. specifically how this company, Pharmanaut, uses satellite imagery, you know, to help farmers work smarter, not harder. Right. I got to say, the whole farming from space thing just blows my mind. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to see this kind of technology completely changing how we think about such like an old practice, you know. Totally. And like you said, with more people to feed and climate change and all, this kind of innovation is more important than ever, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. This is really the right time for it. And that's where Pharmanaut comes in. Yeah. They basically want to make this whole precision agriculture thing uh, accessible to everybody, not just these huge farms, right? Yeah. But before we get too far, I got to ask, what exactly is precision agriculture? Is it just fancy tractors with GPS? It's Well, it's way more than that. It's almost like... Um, Instead of treating an entire field the same way, imagine zooming in on every single plant and, I mean, like almost down to parts of plants, right? So they're not just looking at the field as a whole. They're seeing what each plant, even each part needs, whether it's water or nutrients or even, you know, protection from pests. So it's all about getting the absolute most out of everything, every seed, every drop of water. Exactly. And in a world that's like increasingly worried about resources... I can see the appeal. Yeah. Now, you know, F Pharmanaut relies on this thing called multispectral imagery. And I got to be honest, I'm way more familiar with those filters on Instagram than I am with satellite imaging. So break it down for me. What is that? It's kind of like, you know, giving farmers this superhuman vision. Okay. So think about it. We can only see light in this like limited range of colors, right? Red, oh. green, blue. Multispectral cameras capture way more than that. Even wavelengths like near infrared that we can't even see. Uh huh. And each band of light. It basically reveals something unique about the plants, even the soil. So it's like, I don't know, those crime shows where they like use special lights to uncover hidden clues. Exactly. Except, you know, these clues, they help us grow food. I'm hooked. Tell me more about these clues. What can you actually see? So there's this thing called four band imagery. Mm. And Pharmanon actually offers this even on their free plan. Nice. And basically it combines the light we can see, you know, red, green, blue. And it adds near-infrared light to that. Okay. And that near-infrared, that's the key. It tells us a lot about how healthy the plant is. So, like, the secret ingredient in this four-band recipe is near-infrared. Yeah, exactly. Like, what makes it so special? So, healthy plants, they reflect a lot of near-infrared light. Okay. Stress plants, not so much. So, when you compare those two bands of light, farmers can see immediately which parts of their field need help. Like, even before you can see it with your eyes. So it's like having a crystal ball that says, hey, these plants over here, they're struggling even before they look sick. Yeah, like an early warning system. What kind of problems can they spot early on? You know, the article mentioned using it to detect if plants are thirsty, like if they need water. A water stress. Yeah, exactly. And by finding those thirsty plants early, they can, you know, water them specifically where they need it. Which saves water. Yeah, Absolutely. And that's huge, especially these days. They can even lead to bigger harvests, so it's good for the farmer and good for the environment. Makes sense. I read somewhere that farmers using this, they've saved like 20% on water, which is, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, it's huge. So we talked about four-band imagery, but then there's this NIR imagery too. Is that related? Yeah, so NIR, that's just short for near-infrared. The four-band gives you like a good overview. Okay. This is like really zooming in on plant health, uh -huh. really good for spotting diseases early. So it's all about catching those warning signs before they become a huge problem. Exactly. Early detection is key. And then there's IR imagery, which I know is all about heat, right? Yes. So paint me a picture. What do these heat maps tell us and what can we actually do with that info? So IR imagery can be super useful, especially when you're thinking about things like um, frost. Okay. You know, different parts of a field, they can actually have slightly different temperatures. Interesting. So some spots might be more likely to get hit by frost because of, like, you know, the elevation or which way the wind blows. Oh, wow. So one part of your field could be fine, but another part's at risk. I can see how that's useful. Yeah. So with IR, farmers can pinpoint those vulnerable areas and do something before the frost hits. Like, cover them. Yeah, exactly. Or even plant stuff there that's tougher and can handle the cold. Yeah. It's all about staying ahead of the game. That's amazing that we can literally see temperature differences from space. 
But with all this data coming in from the four band, the NIR and IR, isn't that kind of overwhelming for a farmer? Oh, absolutely. It's a ton of information. Mm -hmm. That's where PharmaNot's platform steps in, though. Yeah, okay. They take all this complicated stuff and turn it into something a farmer can actually use. So less data overload and more, here's what you need to do. <laughs> well, precisely. I like it. So how do they make sense of all that data? So they have this AI, yeah. right? It's called Javen, and it looks at all that imagery, the four band, NIR, IR, all of it. And it doesn't stop there. It combines that with other data, like weather forecasts, what the soil's like. It's like a supercomputer that just like lives and breathes your farm. Exactly. But it's not just about the numbers, right? Jeevan then takes all that and tells the farmer what to do. Oh, interesting. Like it might say, hey, change your watering schedule or you need to fertilize over there or even, you know what? You should plant earlier this year because of the weather. It's like having a 247 farming expert on call, but like from space, does this Jeevan thing cost a fortune? That's the cool part. Pharmanaut has like free stuff and then paid plans too. Okay. So their free tier, it gives you some basic satellite imagery, even that four band we were talking about. So you can try it out, you know, yeah. see if it works for you. That's pretty awesome. So what about those paid tiers? What do they get you? So with those, you get images more often, higher resolution, so you see more detail. And you get access to the more advanced analytics, you know, like the NIR and IR. Oh, and of course, those personalized tips from Jeevan. So it's like you can choose a basic map or you can get like the super detailed GPS system for your farm. It sounds like there's something for everyone. Yeah, exactly. But I'm curious, how does using satellites stack up against other ways of monitoring a farm, like using drones, or even those sensors you mentioned that are right there in the field. Well, it's all about trade-offs, right? Mm -hmm. Drones, they take amazing pictures, super detailed, but they can only cover so much ground. And if it rains, forget it. Right, nobody wants a soggy drone. Exactly. And those in-field sensors, yeah, they're always sending you data, but it's only from that one spot. So you miss the big picture. Yeah, exactly. Like you can't yeah. see the forest for the trees. Satellites, though, they see everything, rain or shine, and they're up there all the time checking in. So for a lot of farmers, it's the sweet spot. Sounds like it. The Goldilocks of farm monitoring. Just right. But let's talk about the future for a minute. The article hinted at some pretty wild stuff coming down the pipeline for this whole precision agriculture thing. Oh, yeah, it's moving fast. This thing called hyperspectral imaging, that really caught my eye. Okay, I'm intrigued. How's that different from the multispectral stuff? So if multispectral is like seeing in color, right? Right. Hyperspectral is like high definition color, but with superpowers. Instead of a few basic colors, imagine seeing hundreds of them. Wow, that's a ton of data. What yeah. can farmers actually do with all that? We're talking about knowing those crops inside and out. Hyperspectral can pick up tiny little problems with nutrients, spot mm -hmm. diseases even before you can see them, even tell you about the tiniest differences in the soil. So it's like giving your fields an MRI. Amazing. What else is brewing in the world of precision agriculture? Remember the infildic, Pharmanaut's AI. Now imagine that brain power, but it can also predict the future. AI that could tell you exactly how much you're going to harvest, warn you about problems before they even happen. Basically, be your farm's personal fortune teller. Wow. So less reacting to disasters and more like shaping the whole system. It's a huge change. It is. And it gets even wilder. The article also mentioned something about using this satellite stuff with self-driving farm equipment. Wait, hold on. Like tractors that drive themselves using satellites? That sounds like something out of a movie. It's closer than you think. Imagine tractors planting seeds, putting down fertilizer, even harvesting, all by themselves guided by what the satellites tell them. That would be a game changer, especially for those massive farms. Talk about efficient. Anything else on the horizon? There's a lot of talk about blockchain in agriculture, though it's still pretty new. Blockchain, like the cryptocurrency thing, what does that have to do with farming? It does seem like a weird combo. But for knowing where your food comes from, it's huge. Okay, explain it to me. How would you even use blockchain for something like that? Imagine going to the store, right? You buy an apple and there's a QR code on it. Scan it with your phone, and boom, you know everything about that apple. Where it was grown, on what farm, what the farmer did to grow it, even if they used pesticides, and when. So no more mystery meat, it's transparency all the way down to the apple you're holding. That's fantastic. Right. And for farmers, it's a way to show off if they're doing things in a way that's good for the environment, maybe even charge a little more for their food because of it. Everybody wins. Consumers know what they're getting. Farmers get rewarded for doing the right thing. But all this tech... 
It can seem overwhelming. What about farmers just starting out with this stuff? It can't be cheap. You're right. Some of it is a big investment up front. But the good news is the more popular it gets, the cheaper it's getting. Right. And like we said, there's free stuff out there to get you started. Like what? Give me some examples. So NASA has this MODIS program, and they actually put out pictures of the whole world every day, free. Wow. Now, it's not as detailed as some of the paid stuff, but hey, it's a start. And the European Space Agency, they've got their Sentinel-2 satellite, and that one gives you free high-resolution images, too. That's awesome. So you don't have to be a mega farm to get in on this. Yeah. But with all this amazing tech, there's still one thing that can mess it all up. The weather. Cloudy skies, right? Yeah. It's true. Clouds can be a problem for the regular cameras. But you know what? They're already making systems that use radar and LIDAR, which can see right through those clouds. No way! Yeah. And they're only getting better and cheaper all the time. So Mother Nature can't stop us. Not completely. I love it. And speaking of nature, climate change is obviously a big deal for farmers everywhere. Can this tech help us deal with that, build a food system that can roll with the punches? 100%. The article talked about climate-smart agriculture. Okay. Basically using this tech to deal with the changing climate. Like what kinds of things? So, for example, satellite images can show farmers where there's a drought right now. They can even predict crazy weather like heat waves or floods and even help use water wisely in places that don't have a lot to spare. It's all about using the information to make smart choices that protect both the crops and, you know, the planet. It's mind-blowing that we can look to the stars to solve some of our biggest problems down here. From just looking up in wonder to actually using their power to grow food sustainably. What a journey. It really does feel like we're on the verge of something huge with agriculture and tech is right at the center of it. But like any big change, I'm sure there are some challenges, right? What are some of the potential downsides that we should be thinking about? Yeah, for sure. With any powerful new technology, we got to think about the downsides. Right? Exactly. What are some of the concerns? Well, data privacy is a big one. Yeah, it makes sense. Farmers are giving these companies a ton of info about their land, their crops, their whole operation, really. We need some solid rules, you know, make sure that data is being used the right way. Farmers need to trust that their info is safe. What about the cost of all this? We yeah. talked about free and cheap options, but isn't this only for the big guys, really? It's a fair question. That initial investment, it can be a lot, especially for smaller farms. But here's the good news. It's getting cheaper all the time. Okay, good. And like we said, there are those free and low-cost options, so it's not just for the mega farms. That's what I like to hear. Everyone should be able to benefit from this, no matter how big or small their farm is. 100%. And it's not just about having the technology, right? It's about knowing how to use it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Training, support, all that. Farmers need to be comfortable using these tools, understanding what the data means. Education is going to be huge. Totally. Like giving someone a smartphone without telling them how to use it. What's the point? Exactly. We need to help farmers become data experts. I love it. So for our listeners who might be feeling a little overwhelmed with all this talk about satellites and AI and the future of farming, what's the main takeaway here? What's at the heart of this whole thing? Sustainability. It's yeah, about it's growing more food with less, less impact on the planet, a food system that works for everyone. That's the goal. Beautifully said. And whether you're a farmer using this tech to make decisions every day or just someone enjoying a meal, we're all part of this. It just goes to show even something as old as agriculture can be revolutionized. And we're just getting started. The future of farming is going to be amazing. I can't wait to see it. Thanks so much for taking this deep dive with us and sharing your expertise. Happy to be here. And to all of you listening, keep those questions coming. Until next time, happy exploring.